Hello friends, this video on conservation of plants and animals part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the various protected areas which are present in our country. Now there are many protected areas which are present in India. So what are those protected areas? One is the national parks. So what are national parks? What do, I mean, how exactly do we manage the conservation there that we will take up a little later. So first let us see what are the protected areas. One is national park, one is wildlife sanctuaries and the third one is biosphere reserves. So the, these are the three main protected areas. Now you will be surprised to know that in India, somewhere around 1970, there were five national parks which existed. So in 1970, which is some uh, 50 years back, so there were only five national parks which existed. But then later in 1972 came up the Wildlife Protection Act. So where more emphasis was given on protection of animals and plants. So after this Wildlife Protection Act, many more national parks were being created. And in 2012, it was found that there were 112 natural, national parks in India. So 112 was a good number and now we are in 2015 so maybe the count would have increased a little further. So you have more than 100 national parks in India itself. Some of the examples of national parks are Bandipur National Park in Karnataka. So you have Karnataka here. So you have Bandipur National Park in Karnataka. You also have Banarkata National Park in Karnataka. You have Bandhavgarh National Park in Madhya Pradesh here. You have Dudwa National Park in Uttar Pradesh. You have Desert National Park in Rajasthan. You also have Gir National Park in Gujarat. Hazaribagh National Park in Jharkhand and Jim Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand or Uttaranchal, whatever you call it. So you see, these were just few names or few examples of national parks. If you actually start naming all the 112 national parks, you will see that they are distributed throughout the country, in different parts of the country, starting from Jammu and Kashmir to Assam to Tamil Nadu, Kerala, everywhere you have national parks. So, a good number of national parks are present in India. Now let us talk about the wildlife sanctuaries. So wildlife sanctuaries, they especially take care of the animals. They ensure that animals are being protected and they are staying in an environment which, which is their natural habitat. So it gives special protection to animals and if you look at the number of animal sanctuaries which is present in India, it is approximately 515. So a huge number of wildlife sanctuaries are present in our country. Some of the examples are Rajgir wildlife sanctuary present in Bihar. So you have it here. So here you have wildlife sanctuary. Badalkhul wildlife sanctuary in Chhattisgarh which is again where is Chhattisgarh? It is here near MP. So here also you have this Badalkhol Wildlife Sanctuary. You have Salim Ali Bird Sanctuary which is in Goa. So you have it here. Nana Devi which is there in Himachal Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh is here. So here also you have Wildlife Sanctuary. You have Chilka Bird Sanctuary which is very popular and of tourist interest and is present in Urissa. So similarly, like as I said, there are more than 500 wildlife sanctuaries. So it is not possible to name all of them. But yes, they are also distributed in different states of the country. Now when you talk about biosphere reserves, they are comparatively larger than national parks or wildlife sanctuary. In fact, one biosphere reserve can include a few national parks or a few sanctuaries within it. So it is like a, on a, at a larger level. So they are called biosphere reserves. So there are a total of 18 biosphere reserves which are present in India. So some of the examples of biosphere reserves are the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve which is present in Tamil Nadu. So in Tamil Nadu you have the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. So let me mark it as biosphere reserve. 
You have the Sundarbans Biosphere Reserve in West Bengal. So in West Bengal, you have Sundarbans Biosphere Reserve. So you would have heard of the Bengal Tiger of Sundarbans, which is quite famous. You have Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve in Uttarakhand or Uttaranchal. So here you have Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve. You have Panchmari Biosphere Reserve in MP. So here you have Panchmari Biosphere Reserve. So each of these biosphere reserve may include other protected areas within it. Like Panchmari Biosphere Reserve might include Panchmari National Park. It might also include some other national parks within it. So Biosphere Reserve is a bigger thing than National Park on Wildlife Sanctuary. You have Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve in Andaman and Nicobar. So where do you have the Andaman and Nicobar here? This is the island. So here you have the Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve. So that means you have yeah, there are a total of 18 biosphere reserves in India. So this is the count of the protected areas in India. So now we are going to talk about each of these protected areas. Now let us see how these protected areas help in conservation of biodiversity. Now in each of these protected areas, whether it is national park or wildlife sanctuary or a biosphere reserve, in all of them, cultivation is strictly prohibited. So you are not allowed to grow crops for cultivation purposes. So that is not at all allowed. So agriculture is not allowed in these areas. Grazing is not allowed. That is animals cannot feed on. You cannot allow your uh, animals or your bunch of cows to get in and then feed on the grasses there. So that is also not allowed. Deforestation is prohibited. You strictly cannot cut down a single tree within this area. So, so that the greenery is maintained, so that the environment in which the animals live, they do not get altered. So deforestation is also prohibited. Hunting is prohibited. Hunting or poaching animals, killing animals in any way is again not allowed. However, all these areas are open for uh, human beings as a tourist place. For example, it is allowed for human beings to come to have a look at the various animals, to have a look at the environment in which the animals live. Live. So they can come for an educational tour or they can come to see the animals as a part of recreational activity. So all those things are allowed but they do not have access to, uh, to take the animals from there or to hunt animals or to cut down forest. So in any way they are not allowed to cause any harm to any of the plants or animals. And because of all these rules only, these protected areas remain protected and that is how the animals and plants are conserved. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.